is the art of wrestling with professional wrestler Colt Cabana. Come on in, sit down, relax. You're about to listen to The Art of Wrestling, a professional wrestling podcast. It's a life podcast. It's a personal journal. It's an entry way into the minds and souls, the hearts and lives of the people involved in the world of professional wrestling. I am your host. My name is Colt Cabana. Hello. I am a guy who fucking nailed that opener. Thank you very much. I'm a border crosser. Uh, there were there was no wall in this border that I crossed. <laughs> oh, if I was Joey Styles, I would have been fired for that one. <laughs> but I'm okay. It's my own show. I can't fire myself because I am my own boss. I am my own man. I am a man's man. I am. Um, I am. Um, I am. I am. I'm, 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 I'm a podcaster. I was trying to make a William Regal joke, but I couldn't think of it, but you thought of it. Thank you very much. Most importantly, though, I am a professional wrestler, and I am not sitting here live in my studio. Oh, God. Should we try that again? Yeah, I am not sitting here live in my studio. You said it real quick, though. You were like, apartment, apartment. Oh! apartment in Chicago, Illinois. I am in front of a live studio audience in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Before we go any further, this is a fan support and listener support podcast supported by people just like you. We give it to free charge every single Thursday. Colt, Commander.com, iTunes, SoundCloud, wherever you get your podcasts from. Colt, great ways that you can support, rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes. Tell a friend. Let somebody know. Facebook it out. Snapchat it out. Vine it out for a couple more weeks. Best way to... Was that... Oh, whoa, whoa. Shots fired to Vine. Best way that you can support. ColtMerch.com, DigitalColt.com, T-shirts, buttons, pictures, posters, DVDs, digital downloads, and of course, the Wrestling Road Diaries, which all of you guys have been putting in your stocking stuffers, getting ready for Boxing Day. It will be in your boxes. ColtMerch.com, DigitalColt.com, and of course, after the show, over there is ColtMerch.table.ca. <laughs> Backslash horrible exchange rate. <laughs> Fucking horrible. Um, okay, we're gonna, we have a lot of fun guests. We have, we're going to have a great time. This is going to be a great show when we're done for Alpha One Wrestling. Uh, I do have a couple of giveaways uh, I have here. Uh, we have an Alpha One uh, Final Act 6. Of course, we're here celebrating... <laughs> Final Act 7. And um, uh, I figured I would... Get, does anybody not have this and, and would want it in a giveaway? <laughs> Okay, so I thought the, the, the best way to give it away... Of course, we're here in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, the home of Iron Mike Sharp, right? Yeah. And uh, um, so I thought the best thing to do would be to uh, for everyone, for someone, whoever wants this, to give me your best Iron Mike Sharp impression. <laughs> Hold on, what a, I, I would say you have to say something, though, because he was always saying something. So uh, how about if we say, whoever can say live from the studio uh, apartment. Uh, I also forgot my catchphrase a second there. <laughs> like Iron Mike Sharp, who really wants it. So raise your hand if you've if you're, if you're got the gall. Beautiful. <laughs> Nobody's getting this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the other thing I have to give away, for those of you at home, I just huck that DVD as far as possible. <laughs> Better broken than given away. I have an Alpha One Wrestling t-shirt. And uh, this is going to be given away. Of course, we are here in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. And, of course, that is directly linked to the musical Hamilton. So... Uh, the, which is known about singing about Alexander Hamilton. Is that right? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, who would sing about the past great... He was the great... Anyone, who wants to sing a wrestling song? <laughs> My man, come here, buddy. Come here. Okay. 
Okay. What's your name? My name is Cameron. Your name is Cameron, and you have a wrestling song in your head that you're ready to sing. No, I do not. (laughs) But you were just, you were ready to sing? Yes. Are you a singer? No. (laughs) What made you, what made you want to come up here? I don't know. (laughs) Well, there's an extra large t-shirt with your name on it. If you could sing any kind of wrestling song, uh, look at your backing way, the more closer I get to it. (laughs) Wrestling song, anything. Who's your? You got a, You got an entrance theme. Anything. I know the, a bit of the beginning of Zack Ryder's. I think that was the perfect answer. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, in the uh, key of B eleven, I don't know it's music. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Here's the opening to Zack Ryder's theme song by Cameron. <laughs> this is gonna be terrible. Oh, radio, tell me everything you know. I will believe. No, that, that, that's all I got. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> Give it up for Cameron. <laughs> I wear my sunglasses. Is that right? <laughs> that was close enough. Thank you. Uh, great. Let's get this show started. Uh, I am going to bring up my first guest who's come over here. Oh, maybe you guys haven't noticed the decorations on my desk right now. As a Jewish man, I know that's um, um, a celebration of something. (laughs) What was it called? A rotisserie? Nativity scene. scene. A rotisserie scene. (laughs) That was pretty good for a Jew. Thank you very much. I, you know... Well, well, we'll get all into it. Let's uh, welcome my first guest to the stage. Uh, for the past six and a half years, you have... It's not these two assholes who came in late. <laughs> but, but I did set up that VIP chair thinking that would be the greatest chair in the building, and no one took it, and he, he's got it. You're welcome, buddy. Uh, for the last six and a half years, you guys have heard me do this show, and after every single one, I thank um, a bunch of people, but one of them I thank happens to be a Toronto native, and he's here hanging out in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Canada. Uh, please welcome to the fake-ass stage that we have, Stu Stone, ladies and gentlemen. You're on the red mic. Right next to the rotisserie. Right next to the rotisserie chicken <laughs> native. Hi, Stu. What's going on, Hamilton? Uh, so this is my friend Stu, and you are you're from. I'm actually from uh, Toronto, just outside of Toronto, Thornhill, Ontario, Canada. Ooh, should we get him a better mic? Let's get him a better mic. There you go. Good thing we did an hour and a half of tech work before the show to get that. <laughs> Uh, I said Thornhill, Ontario, Canada, just outside of Toronto, yes. Okay, and uh, w- did you, like, so Stu and I have been friends for a long time now. Uh, we met, should we, do you want to tell the story how, where sure, we met and how sure, we met? Sure, yeah. I, uh, I was producing a movie that some of you may have seen called The Sheik, a documentary on the Iron Sheik. Has anyone seen it? Yeah. You guys should watch it. It's a great movie. Uh, and for that movie, I was interviewing wrestlers, and one of the wrestlers that I was looking forward to interviewing the most, uh, which I don't even know if it made the movie. <laughs> no. Uh, oh, you want to know if it made, if I made the movie? Uh, no, it no, did it not. It didn't make the movie. Because I watched it, yeah. waiting for my scene, Stu. But it didn't Producer come. Stu Stone. But you were great. Uh, and uh, I was really interested in uh, meeting uh, Cole Cabana, a fellow Jew, and uh, I wanted to get his take on the Iron Sheik and... Uh, when we, we got to talking, uh, he had mentioned to me that he was interested in getting into, uh, into doing a podcast. And I told him I was interested in getting into professional wrestling. Yeah. Both of them very lucrative careers. <laughs> uh, and uh, so we kind of agreed to kind of help each other out. And uh, here he is. Uh, all these years later, he's got the number one podcast in all of professional wrestling. Wow. And uh, be- dare I say in the world... Uh, so, you know, I, I, I'd, I'd like to say that I was like his trainer that helped him kind of get ready for his big break as yeah. a podcaster. And, and now, Stu, you are uh, in wrestling. I am. Thanks to you, I am. Uh, and uh, it, it, it was incredible. Uh, basically, um, Colt put my name out there and uh, I got an interview or a, an audition, so to speak, with a promoter out in uh, Southern California named Dave Marquez, who runs a show called Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. I don't know if you guys have seen it out here, but... 
uh, I got to be a part of that show, and I got to make history with uh, feuding with Colt Cabana for many years. Mm. And uh, from there, I've just been able to, you know, kind of weave my way through the uh, independent circuit of professional wrestling, and you're, I love it. it. Along with, like, doing... You're, you were a child actor. I was, yes. So along with doing movies now and directing... Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you, you started the acting scene here, obviously. Actually, right here in Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, there is a funny quick story about Hamilton. Okay. Many years ago, there was a, there, uh, there was a, sh- a channel in Canada called YTV, and they had game shows that filmed here in Hamilton. And I used to be a contestant on those game shows back in the Consistently? day. Consistently? Consistently. What game show were you on? Uh, there was one called Clips. Does anyone know, remember that? Yeah! I, I won a soccer ball on that show. It was awesome. Uh, and then there was another one called Generation Gap. That's a long time ago. But I won a trip to Disneyland on that show. And then the company that gave away the prize went out of business, so we never got to go. Uh, so, yeah, I got screwed on that. Mm. But uh, great memories in, in Hamilton. But, uh, yeah, I grew up in Toronto as a child actor. I was a voice of uh, a guy named Ralphie on the Magic School Bus. I don't know if anyone's watched the Magic School Bus. Uh, by the way... <laughs> Much bigger pop for Ralphie the Magic School That's Bus thing. Than, than the Iron Sheik documentary that yeah. you did <laughs> while at a wrestling podcast. Not, yeah, listen, I, I, could get, I could probably get another pop. I don't know how old this audience is, but I was a voiceover actor on a show called My Pet Monster. That was... Yeah. That is like a huge Canadian... <laughs> only Canadians know that show. Uh, I but, remember the doll. Yeah, so the doll was my buddy on the show. <laughs> and who were you? I was Chucky, his like little buddy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, Amazing. So there you go. I, I knew that they would like that. <laughs> um, and then, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually, I, I want you to hang, will you hang out with me this whole time? I would love to. Now that the fans know that you were Chucky from my bed <laughs> Chucky, monster, baby. You're over. I'm you're over. You're totally over. Super over. <laughs> I, it's, it was a long time ago. <laughs> he, he went through puberty, he like, oh. and he's a different man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but I do want to ask, and there's one situation I'm thinking of, and maybe there's a different one, but uh, of ways, because y- you've loved wrestling since you were a child. Yes. We talked about this. Obsessed with wrestling. Of course. Same way that we all are. Yep. Uh, and you've snuck wrestling into some things that you've done. Yes. Uh, should I just throw yeah, one in? Throw one in. Well, I'm thinking of the, of the one I'm thinking of, so that if that's not it, yeah, then That's I'll, the one. Okay. That's the one. Okay. Uh, so I was in a movie called Donnie Darko, which is uh, a very... Oh, well, hey. hey. Ooh, oh. that uh, And in that movie, uh, one of the scenes where we got, we got to, we were supposed to dress up for Halloween because that's what happened in the movie. So in the script, I was supposed to be like a clown or something like that. And I was like, no way. If this is supposed to take place in 1988, I want to be Hulk Hogan <laughs> because that's what, that's what I would have been in 1988. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, in the movie Donnie Darko, I, I'm like dressed in a full Hulk Hogan outfit with... Uh, a mustache and everything. And, and you made the call for that. I made the call for that. Stuffed my trunks and everything. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> Did you uh, then have sex with Jake Gyllenhaal's girlfriend? I tried, but no. Was that? That was a that great was, joke. No. It that was, was a great Hulk Hogan, <laughs> Bubba the Love Sponge joke. Yeah. That did not land. No. Well, I can't. Chucky, though, for my Chucky. Chucky. Yeah. <laughs> Stu, where are you at on the internet? Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm on J Date, currently swiping. Perfect. Looking for a wife. <laughs> Uh, I have a I've got a Twitter at Stu Stone and verified uh, you know verified you can check me out I tweet to Colt all the time yeah. he's got me muted but uh, one day he'll <laughs> I thought they don't I thought they don't let you know that <laughs> no, no they did <laughs> uh, but that's about it yeah as uh, Stu Stone I have a TSM radio podcast as well but uh, you know people can you can search Google you'll find me and you just, you had a movie you put out is that available to buy yeah or? actually I directed a film called The Haunted House on Kirby Road which is available right now only in Canada. On uh, it's available. Uh, it's going to be on the Super Channel if anyone here gets that channel. I don't know, but it's on iTunes and anywhere you download movies. And it's based on an actual haunted house in tr- outside of Toronto in a city called Vaughan. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a stoner horror movie about people who smoke a lot of pot and go to a haunted house. Beautiful, <laughs> <laughs> Stu Stone, ladies and gentlemen. Can you come over here. Sorry to break up the party, but we do have some sponsors that we want to get to and pay attention to. Of course, Indochino is one of my brand new sponsors. They're making custom-made suits at a great price, and I'll get you an even better price. They're doing it right over the internet. These are all custom to fit you exactly. They gave me a premium dress shirt so I could experience it myself. It took 10 minutes. It's super easy. These suits and shirts are fitted to you exactly. They're not just sitting in some warehouse. They're not off the rack. You put in your information, and then their team gets to work. Indochino is one of the largest 
made-to-measure menswear brands, and here's how it works. Head to Indochino.com or drop by one of their nine North American showrooms. Pick from hundreds of fabrics and patterns. Choose your customizations from lapels to pleats to jacket linings and more. Submit your body measurements, and then in just four weeks, hey, you're getting a suit. Let's get you a suit. My listeners, you guys, you can get any premium Indochino suit for $389, which when you think about it, it's an unbelievable price. All you got to do is enter the code Colt. Indochino.com. The promo code is Colt. The shipping, that's free. You're going to get any premium suit for 50% off the regular price, $389. Never worry about badly fitting suits or expensive trips to the tailor. Become a grown-up. Get a suit. Use Indochino and get ready to look like a million bucks. All right, let's head back to the show. Uh, our next guest coming to the stage. Um, we're going to see how much we can get out of this, Stu. Half the reason I want you here, because uh, I now have an interview with a man. Well, I'll take that back. With an animal. <laughs> Please welcome Space Monkey to the stage. <laughs> Uh, you ever been in any uh, movies, or you ever uh, be the voice of anybody? M- M- monkey, own voice, own voice. <laughs> no, no, no movie. Not, no, not, yeah, I've never been in a movie. Not, not, not yet. This is going to translate well audio only. Yeah. <laughs> well, so I- I'm just saying, Planet of the Apes, right? That would have been an easy gig to get. Too, too little, too little. Too little? <laughs> oh, it's like uh, it's like New York in the '80s, right? <laughs> not enough gas, huh, Space Monkey? He didn't... Monkey, clean, clean. You're a clean monkey? <laughs> no, 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 no juice. Space, space, not juice. No juice. <laughs> what about, like, monkeys drink apple juice and stuff? A- a- apple, good. Banana, good. Banana juice. <laughs> that was an obvious one. <laughs> <laughs> and I went with apple first. You did. <laughs> Very nice. Um... Well, um, where, how did you, so space, so you're a monkey, <laughs> you wrestle, did you learn to wrestle in space? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. N- N- NASA, NASA, help, help, help send, send monkey space. M- monkey learn. So you don't come from space. Earth, can, can, Canadian jungle. <laughs> <laughs> Stu, is there any jungles in Canada? I, I don't know. No, right. <laughs> African lion safari, maybe? Seek, 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 secret. Oh, there you go. Did you say sea? Do you speak seek, Spanish seek, now? Secret. secret. Oh, secret. It's secret. <laughs> right. Um, so, uh, so do, you, do you have a, a family? N- N- NASA, adopt when mon- monkey little. Oh, no. Were you, were you taken at a young age? <laughs> l- l- lab. 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 Exper- experiment. <laughs> what do they? What do they do to you? Prepare, prepare for for space mission. Yeah, but give me the good stuff, space monkey. <laughs> hey, uh, I touch you. What did you say? <laughs> I didn't want to say it too loud. <laughs> m- m- mon- monkey, not 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 like not like talk about. Oh, you don't want to talk about it. <laughs> and um. So who trained you to be a professional wrestler? Mon- monkey, meet, 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 in, in space. You met, a, you met a different professional wrestler in space. <laughs> you haven't thought about this part of the story, have you? Moon, 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 moon chins. <laughs> moon chin. Monkey go moon once. <laughs> Did he say meet? Is that Sean Stasiak? Meet, yes, meet. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that who trained him? Uh, moon, 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 moon chins. Moon chins. <laughs> moon chins. What does that mean? Like, like, like. Like Marsh, Martian, but moon. Ah, uh, that's clever. Moonshins, like a Martian, but a moonshin. That's cute. So, who trained? Like, was there a, was there a loop up there? Would you go <laughs> town to town? On the... Oh, oh, only only tra- train basic. M- monkey learn 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 back Earth. Earth. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, have you met any other animal wrestlers on the uh, circuit? Not, 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 not yet. Because you'd think there was, like, well, Georgie Animal Steel would yeah. be the number one. Is he your hero? He, he, he buckle. Mon- monkey, like, eat food. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Do you ever, uh, yeah, do you ever, like, 
think about eating the turnbuckle? Tr- try, try. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And you only like the taste of bananas, right? And, and, and hum- human food. And uh, humans? Uh, human food, 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 human food. <laughs> you do like human food. <laughs> what do you like? P- 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 burger. P- p- pizza. C- p- cow, cow, pig. <laughs> Just sounds like he has Tourette's, too. This is... Not, not, not human, not human. This is certainly going to be the hardest hitting interview you've done in yeah. six years, by far. <laughs> so, so, sorry, sorry. Did you just bite me? <laughs> M- monkey try. Why would you bite me? You, you ask, 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 I ask. I saw that movie Outbreak. You might pee. Yeah. <laughs> you might want to. Wow. Well, hopefully I'm okay. Uh, Space Monkey, are you on the internet? M- monkey net. In- inter- internet. <laughs> Space Monkey. PW Space Monkey. T- 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 Twitter. F- 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 Instagram. Okay. Pro, Pro Wrestling T. Yeah. Uh, uh, mon- mon- monkey at T. What's backslash what? Space Monkey? Space Monkey. And how did you learn how to use a NASA? NASA? NASA T. NASA Teach. Yeah. <laughs> That's for everything. Yeah, you're smart, Space Monkey. <laughs> Well, you, listen, I've watched it. You're a, you're a great wrestler. The other night, uh, fans instead of streamers threw bananas into the ring. <laughs> and, uh, hey, here's an easy one, Stu. Uh, what's your favorite wrestling move? B- m- m- monkey. <laughs> flip, flip. Monkey flip. Monkey flip. <laughs> Space monkey, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> How do you think I did with that, Stu? That was hard hitting. Yeah. The dirt sheets are gonna have a field day with that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If Mel, you know, Meltzer's never talked about. Uh, he's never done a story about teach moochins. I've often said that Cole Cabana can have a great wrestling match with a broomstick. I think that he's just proven he can have a great podcast with a monkey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how great that was. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, hopefully, it did the uh, did the job. Uh, okay, well, let's bring up a human next. How does that sound? <laughs> uh, please welcome to the stage, uh, Donovan Dijak. Hey, bud. Hey, so you're going to make me follow the monkey. That's yeah. exciting. Hey, at least I'm not making you go after the monkey. I didn't say spank the monkey. That was not- <laughs> was that not obvious that was coming? Okay. <laughs> I like how you show up in your um, because what I've said about you, and this could either be a wonderful insult, oh, or so. or an unbelievable um, what's the opposite of insult? Compliment. 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 Is uh, to me, I mean, so you're Donovan Dijak. That is me. Just. Dude wrestler from Boston. <laughs> Just a dude, yep. But like, really, I'm tall, though. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. If I was Vince McMahon, which sometimes I play Vince McMahon, <laughs> weirdly role-playing in the bedroom. It's a weird thing I do. I, uh, I think I would make you a Croatian basketball player. Uh, yes, uh, Croatian is accurate. Is have it? I, have I told you that before? No. Yeah, Croatian. That was I'm, the uh, luckiest guess ever. Yeah. <laughs> what? That was not a guess. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, one quarter Croatian, which is the, the part that's prevalent, I guess. That's my dad's dad. And then a quarter Hungarian. Hold on. He said the part is prevalent and then literally opened his hands yeah, and looked at his dick. <laughs> you know. Very prevalent. The obvious part. The giant Croatian dick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about when you say the Croatian part? Like what I look like. Like tall, white, oh, okay. giant nose. That, that part of it. <laughs> Yeah, I was wondering if you were part of the tribe. <laughs> Another reference I don't get. Uh, Jewish. Ah, I yes. oh, see. No, I'm yes. not. Member of the tribe. <laughs> Got it. Um, so you're one quarter Croatian. Correct. And what are the other quarters? Uh, quarter Hungarian and then half Italian. I don't, I don't look Italian at all, but my, my mother's parents were, were Italian, so I had uh, lots of delicious pasta dinners on Sundays growing up. Very nice. And you grew up in Boston. Near Boston. Or I made that up. That's yeah. where you started, yeah? <laughs> near, near Boston, yep. Um, 
I'm originally from a small town called Lunenburg, Massachusetts, which nobody on earth has heard of. But uh, kind of sounds like it would belong in Croatia. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that I'm actually a little hesitant to bill myself from Lunenburg. I bill myself from Worcester, Massachusetts, because that's the, the closest big city to where I grew up from. But Lunenburg sounds very much like Luxembourg or some other random European country. So I don't want people hearing Lunenburg and assuming I'm some sort of giant Croatian... Yes. Person. Make him a basketball player. <laughs> He's going to dunk. I, ass- I assume. <laughs> <laughs> I-, I assume all this ties into the basketball shorts I'm wearing. Yes, and yes. that's that's when you first came up. <laughs> yes, I-, I did play uh, basketball throughout college. Uh, yeah, I wasn't I was... very good at it, but I-, I tried my damnedest. Hey, we have that in common. I was known as the worst uh, Division One A football player in Division One A football history. You played Division One A football. I did. Where well, did not play? very well. <laughs> yeah. I also played Division One A football, and then I transferred to play basketball. Oh, really? Yeah, I so... played at the University of Massachusetts before they were. Before they wait, you played basketball at UMass? No, I played football at UMass, and then I transferred to a smaller school to play basketball and football. Okay. Yeah. And, and I'm, not, I'm not. Yeah, I'm good at football, but I don't like it. I'm. I'm. I like basketball, and I'm terrible at it. So not terrible, but not, and then not good enough. So you were like, oh, either can I can either get drafted to the NBA or go wrestle on shitty independent wrestling shows. <laughs> and you're like, I'll go with shitty independent. Shitty, yes. <laughs> Here we are. Here we are. <laughs> I made it. Hey, am I a heel tonight? <laughs> da crap. Um. <laughs> I take that back. If you guys, <laughs> sitting in the basement of a Knights of Columbus, <laughs> an hour outside of Toronto, don't think you are what you are, <laughs> you're wrong. <laughs> Embrace it. Uh, so, so what happened? So you jumped into wrestling or what? I, uh, I did. I jumped into wrestling. After I um, graduated from college, uh, I was about 22, 23, and... Um, Standard was, age of college graduation. <laughs> I was. Uh, what did, uh, do? Do you have college around here? What? 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 How old do you graduate? Have a, from? <laughs> That's not meant as an insult. I, I don't know how the education system works, so I don't know if you go to junior college and something else and whatever. Well, so, because I remember when I played football, yeah. I was like eighteen. Uh, right, you started eighteen college freshman year of college football in the were, states. Yeah, yeah. I don't and there know was here. a dude from. He was a freshman also. But he was from Canada, and he was like 23, because he like graduated high school at 22, I think. Yeah, it was some I, kind of weird. I have no clue how it works here. Um, so, so yeah, I graduated, and I was working a normal job, um, which sucks. And um, the, I found the the. It's a really long story. I don't know if I if you want me to tell this story. Uh, or not, well, so I've told it on every podcast ever that I've ever been on. Oh, I can't wait. Wow. <laughs> so it's you it's one of those really exciting stories <laughs> about how I got into pro wrestling. You went to the moon. I went to the moon, and the moon <laughs> NASA the moon sent you to the moon. Uh, well, just I mean, tell who you. I mean, the idea of like. Is that what you wanted to do? Did you think, like, oh, I'm a tall dude, I should wrestle? I never thought... It was always something that I wanted to do and something that I thought I would be good at, but it's uh, it's something that never presented itself as a real option to me. Because, to me, pro wrestling was, like, from reading Mick Foley's book and, and hearing stories about, like, Edge and Christian living on the road and, and dedicating their lives from a young age, it always seemed like... You know, like Olympic gymnastics, something you had to start from, like, birth and, and really dedicate yourself over a number of years. So I never saw it as a viable option once I was, you know, 22, 23, whatever I happened to be. And then I, I saw that the, the the school I trained at, which is the New England Pro Wrestling Academy under Brian Fury, was was uh, within driving distance. The the training hours were, were something that I could I could actually, like balance my, my education and my, so you, my job and well, life with. Yeah, what were you doing while you were training then? Because you, you had was, graduated. Yeah, I was still working my, my full-time job as a... Uh, what was I? I he was, forgot. He I was, forgot his job. <laughs> I was an investigator for the Committee for Public Council Services in Massachusetts, which, fun story, I ended up getting fired from a year later because I went to an AJ Styles seminar in Binghamton, New York, and tweeted about it online, and they found out and fired me because I had taken a sick day from work. So Guys, that's exciting. Lesson number... Was, w- here's lesson number one. Don't lie to your employer. (laughs) Or Jesus will banish you. (laughs) He didn't teach that lesson, huh? He did not, no. (laughs) Um, 
And then you said you were also getting educated too. Is that did, were you furthering your education? I was. Yeah, there, it's. I can't remember the the time. Too many blows to the head. But uh, the at at some point I was getting my master's degree and working at the same time and and training in pro wrestling and working a second job so I could. It, Basically, my my current wife now should hate me, but she didn't at the time, so I decided to marry her. <laughs> Ladies, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so, like, was that? Did like? I imagine that schedule is just brutal, and I've always prided myself on like making sure I have a schedule where I can like sleep, you know, right, <laughs> or not hate my life. Almost right. was there a point where you like hated your life a little bit? Uh, yeah, uh, especially when I had to pick up the second job. I, I was selling dog food <laughs> at my. Uh, at my local uh, PetSmart, so so I was doing that. I was full time with the uh, the the CPCS do, as an investigator. I was. Um, There's a lot of pressure in having a real job and being that tall. There's a guy who works. <laughs> it's true, Stu. Don't laugh at me. I'm this, short. I don't this, know. Yeah, you would have no clue. <laughs> There's a guy who work like there's a guy who works at my vitamin store and he's like seven two and I'm just like all I can think is like wasted talent right like this poor <laughs> fucking guy is dishing out that's, protein bars that's all, yeah that's all I was thinking when I was selling dog food I was like wow this this must be the saddest excuse for a and, and dog salesman there's probably a lot of pressure just being tall in general because like I, do people like like think you have to be are, are people thinking that you are somebody or something does that come do you understand what I'm saying? Like, I think so, yeah. Don't laugh at my there, shitty there's, questions, there's all right? A, there's a, <laughs> in, in Massachusetts, the first assumption, I think, when people see me is that I'm Rob Gronkowski. So that's just a huge letdown when they find out I'm not him. Oh, it's a huge letdown that you have a wife, too. This, <laughs> <laughs> I would have taken... I would have, yeah, of course I'm Gronkowski. I, th- I think the second assumption is that I'm some sort of professional athlete, um, which for a long time I was not. I, I'm sort of not now, but kind of am. Um, so, so that half works. And then uh, I think the third assumption is that I... I uh, work at Vitamin Shop. Work at Vitamin yeah. Shop. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then, so you've made like a nice break now, man. Like, you know, you, you, you've uh, divvied yourself out from the, uh, the everybody else that ever wrestles in independent wrestling. And now you've made a nice little name for yourself. Uh, you're with Ring of Honor. I see on the televisions. Like, was there a point where... Uh, where like it, you you saw the switch coming for you at all? The switch to being a, a guy on local shows getting ten bucks to being a guy who's now here in uh, Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Um, <laughs> I mean, in a in a basement of a <laughs> Knights of Columbus. As as happens a lot in in pro wrestling, um, I got into it under the the pretense that WWE was always looking for bigger, taller guys. That's um, that's the way that pro wrestling used to be. Now, especially over the last two or three years, it's like really changed. But but back when I started, you know, it wasn't that long ago. It was four years ago. But it was really at the tail end of like WWE is really only looking for like taller, bigger guys. So in my head, as a young guy coming into the business, I was like, nah, I'll, I'll train for a little bit. And then WWE picked me up. You know, t- typical normal green guy ego stuff. Um, and I ended up getting a tryout, and it didn't work at all. And Ooh. I got, I got uh, the, I wouldn't say hard no, but it was it was a pretty solid no. Did you go to one of those camps, or you went to the show and they did a tryout? No, the the camp down at uh, it was the last one at uh, and you, uh, FCW. And you ate shit. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. tell me about that. Yeah, they told. Me. <laughs> I, I, it's not very exciting. I was just I was just given the no. You know, you were like, just awful. I, I I wasn't. I don't I don't know. I mean, that's hard to say. It it was. Um, the, they gave me the option to go to two different ones. It was either the the one uh, for like, because I was right on the cusp of whether I was ready to wrestle or not. So they gave me the option of go to the uh, the indie guy one, which ended up being the one that was the first one at the performance center, or go to the the amateur uh, like Olympic athletes one. So I ended up going to that one. So I was one of a few actual like training pro wrestlers who was there. Um, so I don't. I mean, I. I stood out in a sense that I I wasn't it wasn't my first time in a ring and it kind of looked like that but I apparently didn't stand out enough to get signed which is a good thing because yeah. I definitely would have sucked. And so is that the mindset that then took you forward of like oh I should give this a go on this kind of scene? The plan I, the, the plan wasn't WWE or bust. I I I just th- thought I could you know um, have success there which in hindsight I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have had success there. Um, 
but once once uh, once I had that failure in my back pocket, I, I figured to myself, uh, I'm I'm not going to let that stop me. You know, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna try to find other avenues to 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 make a name for myself to to have some sort of success in professional to become a better professional wrestler, and um, I, I I can't. I can't imagine that it was more than two or three months after that where I started going to the the Ring of Honor tryout camps and and they gave me a couple of no's a few times too, but I, I went to about three or four of them and eventually it started oh, working nice. out for me. Awesome, and you're doing great now, man. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, where are you at on the internet? I am uh, pretty much everything's Donovan Dijak. It's uh, Twitter, Facebook, everything's D O N O V A N D I J A K. Donovan Dijak dot com. You can find everything through there. Instagram's Donovan Dijak forty four. Pro Wrestling Tees dot com slash Donovan Dijak. Donovan Dijak, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. It's a tall lad. He's very tall, very tall. Yeah. He's ready for a pickup game, I think. Yeah. <laughs> He's actually, like, does very, very, like, cruiserweight-ish athletic things in the ring, too. It's pretty impressive. I'm a big fan. Uh, yeah, I like the idea of, like... Like all like all these wrestlers, like these great wrestlers now are like, finally the times have turned. He's like the one guy that got fucked over on the Indies. <laughs> <laughs> of like the times changing and like not wanting big guys anymore. Um, right, but he is great. Great to have him on. Let's get our next guest out here. Uh, I'm uh, excited to bring this guy out. This is a, a two-timer. We had him here for the last time, and uh, we're excited to have him again. Please welcome the Super Cop. Yeah! Dick Justice, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Dick is going around shaking everybody's hand, taking his sweet ass time. <laughs> First Dick chant you've ever had on the show, or what? Not since the last time I've been here. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Well, I, the crowd was excited for Dijak to point to his own dick. That's true. Uh, you're undercover today. I'm under a sheepskin cover. You're not dressed in a police outfit. Are you carrying right now? Of course. Where? If I told you that, then I wouldn't be undercover. Oh. Is, is uh, and you would, you would know the rules. Uh, is, is Canada a, no, you can't carry in Canada. Uh, the police carry flashlights here in Canada. Yes, uh, <laughs> tasers. Hey, tasers. When, when you're the super cop, you, you gotta always have it on you. Right. You know what I mean? So, uh, how are you? I'm good. How's the uh, wrestling been going? Good. You lost some weight. A little bit, yeah. Dropped about 50 LBs. Okay. What are you doing? Hey. You cutting down on the donuts? Unfortunately. Oh. oh. I bet you drink like a lot of coffee. goes all right through you, right? All the coffee. Yeah. All of it. And I had to start drinking. The, I couldn't put the cream and the sugar in it. So, you know, when the pumpkin spice came out at the Dunkin' Donuts, I had to refrain, take it easy. <laughs> Just give me the large dark roast coffee. Uh, do you have do you have a lieutenant of some sorts? Like, uh, do you have a higher? Is there anyone higher rank? I guess Super Cop would be the highest ranking. There is a, a gentleman that I answer to. He is based out of New York City. Okay, uh, his name New is York City. New York City. I got to go every once in a while. Mm -hmm. You know, when I screw up. Because I'm curious as to why they let you. Uh, they they allow you. Like, do you get asked for time off to wrestle or? Well, I tell them that there are villains. Mm -hmm. And I need to dispose of these villains. So technically, it does count as work days. So it counts as work. Yeah. Does a super cop get a 401k? Probably not. No. And if I did, I wouldn't have any money to save in it. Right. So that's why we got to sell those 8x10s upstairs. Exactly. Where's that free DVD you threw? Who wants to buy that? <laughs> it's over there. Um, all right. I've got some uh, police codes. Do you have any questions for the super cops, Stu? Uh, I'm going to see what's on You want to see what I... Yeah. i got some police codes here, and um, obviously you know what they are. Yes. And so I thought maybe you could, um, you know, help... Uh, times that you've done, you've said these police codes or, or used the scanner to mm -hmm. in a wrestling uh, in a wrestling ring or wrestling environment. Okay. Okay. So the, I mean, the famous one is a one eight seven. Have you ever had to uh, channel a one eight a one eight seven is a homicide? Yes. Sir. But isn't he supposed to tell you what it is? Well, he knows. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I'm just you know making sure he you know. <laughs> well, he's got it. I'm. I just want to know that he knows. If it's wrong, I'll tell him. There it is. Fair enough. There and it is. It's his podcast. He can tell the people. 
Beautiful nativity scene, by the way. Thank you very much. It's a r- rotisserie scene. <laughs> ah, rotisserie scene. Festive special. That's the festive special. It's the festive special. Beautiful lemon pepper Mary you got in there. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, has that ever happened in the ring? Uh, no, and I've never been in the ring with Homicide, which would have been a coincidence. Yeah. I would have called it in, gotten very nervous, sweaty palms. Uh, Mom spaghetti? Mom spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not, I rolled my sleeves up. It been, All right, what, it. what about a two four two? That's a that's a battery. Uh, that happens every time. <laughs> <laughs> and you call it in? Well, I can't get to my phone. Oh. I just got to handle it myself and hope for the best. What Usually, it? it turns out poorly, mm. but sometimes it turns out less poorly. <laughs> All right. Uh, so um, a two seventy three A is child neglect. Oh. <laughs> Did that get sad? Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? I did. Uh, I did call that in for the for the Jim Nye case here today. For the Jim Neidhart case? No, not the Jim Neidhart. Because Natty's doing fine. I've. S- I see that. Yeah. But there's a gentleman here. His name Jim Nye. He's right. a Science guy. I understand. He's a terrible science guy. Right. But he is the partner and presumed. Yeah. Put the shirt down, man. Oh. Uh, but he is the presumed caregiver of the space monkey. And, yeah. So I had to call So he neglected in. the space monkey. Absolutely he did. Yeah, I've heard about that. And space monkey, one of my best friends. Right. Which tells you how many good human friends. Thank you. Now, this is turning into the Dr. Phil show. Yeah, was there? People are clapping for positive. What was the clap for, by the way? <laughs> that he's best friends with a monkey? Yeah. Not, just, not just a monkey. He's a monkey from space. Okay. You've really turned. You've really uh, found a relationship with this monkey. He's a good. He's a good monkey. Yeah. He's polite. He's kind, sweet, good-hearted. You know, if something. If it's fall time, everything falls from the sky. I got big hair. It falls in my hair. He says, "I got you." I'm like, Thank he's you. picking it out, right? Of course. Uh, a three ninety. That's uh, being drunk. Called that in. I've called that in multiple times. Yeah. Did you wrestle the Sandman? No, I've never wrestled. I haven't been on a show with the Sandman, and I'd probably know better not to. Just kind of let he, you've been doing this long enough. You can you know what you're doing. Do you drink on the job ever? Mm, <laughs> that's a yes. Huh? I think I think I have to tell you no. Okay, I don't think that's how it works. I'm the civilian. Well, let me do it like this. No. Wink. <laughs> you don't say the wink. Oh, sorry. Nobody can see this. I'm a slouch. Three seventy four B. That's illegal dumping. That's what happened over there in that corner just earlier. <laughs> yeah, what about uh, 374C, which is throwing your illegal dumping? <laughs> we, he, he's trained to know better. He knows Sometimes better? it gets a little out of hand. Get it? Because throwing. Um, <laughs> wow. But, but sometimes, you know, he, he has a, a, an accident here or two, but you, you can't, can't get upset with him. Okay. He's and a then, monkey from space. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> And uh, last, last but not least, the 604. Uh, you know what a 604 is, right? Of course. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, 604 is. Uh, this is a real thing from the internet, so it makes it real. Um, throwing missiles. If you throw missiles, they call in a 604. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've called it in one time. One time? Yep. Fourth of July. <laughs> at a show? Uh, it wasn't at a show. It was actually at a backyard barbecue. Maybe a backyard wrestling show? <laughs> work when you can, man. Right, I understand. You work when you can. Uh, Dick, anything else going on in the world of wrestling that I need to know about? Oh, you, dude, you were in this fucking video. No need for that F word there. Sorry about that. <laughs> I I said this that. fucking video. Is it on Brazzers or something? No, you're thinking... Look, people call me Ron Jeremy all the time, but I think you're thinking of the wrong guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what was, you made a, a movie. That's, it's on YouTube, right? I did. You were a part of a movie. It was so good. Thank you. Tell tell us about it. Well, that was exciting. It's the Dick Justice Super Cop, the movie, part one. Woo! Yeah! A polite applause. It took, yeah. us, it took us one day to film. <laughs> but, you know, you said it was good, so we did all right in one day. Myself, uh, Ricky Shane Page, Gregory Iron, and Heidi Loveless are all in it. And uh, it's basically me being a super cop trying to save the world from an evil scientist 
which is what I'm doing now. Oh, so it's a documentary. Right. Yeah. Jim Nye was played by Gregory Iron. Okay. Yeah, and did you know shortly after that, we all went and saw Sugar Ray in a parking lot for free. Like Sugar Ray the Bend? Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy, right? Now, I know we're in, a can- we're in Canada here, but after hearing a story like that, I would say... America. <laughs> <laughs> Only in America. Let me, let me just... Uh, the whole thing is North America, though. Ah. Oh. North America. America. <laughs> Where are you at on the internet, Dick? Uh, Twitter is... <laughs> <laughs> just Google. Just Google, Google Dick. You'll find him. Where, where is your specific dick on the internet? <laughs> You don't make this any easier for me, do you? <laughs> I'd like to direct the sequel to your movie, by the way. Uh, if I had a dollar for every time I heard that. <laughs> but uh, Twitter is SuperCopJustice. Instagram, SuperCopJustice. <laughs> Snapchat, SuperCopJustice. Facebook, DickJustice. ProWrestlingTees.com backslash DickJustice. And uh, that's it. Okay, any last words for uh, humanity? Maybe hi. Hi. <laughs> and bye. Dick Justice, ladies and gentlemen. Good night, everybody. Hey, I'm going to interrupt one more time to talk about a sponsor, Zip Recruiter. These guys are great if you're hiring, if you're a boss, if you're a company. Zip Recruiter, it's a search engine for finding and posting jobs. Are you a place or a business or a thing, maybe even a wrestling company? Do you need to hire somebody? Posting your job in one place isn't enough to find quality candidates. You need to post your job on all of the job sites, and you can do it through ZipRecruiter.com. ZipRecruiter already has 9 million resumes you can search through in their database. With one click, send your job to 100-plus job sites, including social media like Twitter and Facebook. They're posting jobs in any city, any industry. It's nationwide. There's no juggling emails or calls to your office. You can quickly screen candidates, rate them, and hire the right person. It's been used by over 1 million businesses. Featured on Forbes, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, and more. The second we clean house over at Pro Wrestling Tees, we're only going to hire people on ZipRecruiter. Right now, my listeners, that's you. You can post jobs on ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash first. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash first. One more time, ZipRecruiter.com slash first. All right, let's head back to the show. Uh, please welcome Evil Uno and Stu Grayson, the Super Smash Brothers. I'll edit that. You drew a really big crowd. Thank you. Things it's have really gone up for you in the last three years. Well, it's it was free with <laughs> a VIP ticket. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's why. Okay. <laughs> I don't think they're here for me. <laughs> well, they're not here for me either. So. Well, perfect. Yeah. We, this, we're all losers. We're friends, it's great. Then. Are you? You're hidden behind that. You can move that if you want, uh, Stu. Oh, what is this? Oh wow! That's, wow. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Thanks. The the first thing you guys asked me upon coming up here, yes, was. Uh, is this a PG show? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I said, fuck no. <laughs> also, the 13-year-old boy over there said, hell no. Uh, incorrect. The, no. the right swear is fuck for that one. Do you, is, there, is there gross, is, is there un-PG stuff you oh, want to get okay. off your I mind? Mean, it, I mean, it was nothing like personal. We were, like, no, we we were, just, just, we were talking about porn before this. Yeah, uh, we, were we were just in the car wondering what we would talk about, and I just said, Actually, yeah, you know, maybe porn would be yeah. one of the things. Well, but. your team name is the Super Smash Brothers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, It just, does imply something. Yeah. 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 There's something there. Which I feel would make, you guys can make that transition super easy oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to porn Take stock. your shirt off. Take your shirt oh, off. No, no. Uh, no, but, uh, <laughs> no, right before this, we were actually having a discussion if we were to uh, watch a porn and die watching it, which one you would want to watch. You know, the last one you want to yeah. go for. Oh, God. It's real tough. It's tough. There's and a lot I, of good instead stuff Instead of there. narrowing down to one scene, because that makes me seem like I watch way too much of it, mm-hmm. I, it's just more who is in the scene. Like, what was yeah. the answer? Well, let's, I think we should go down the panel here. Yeah, yeah. who's right. starting? I'm not, I'm not, no, that's Stu. That's Stu. Okay. Well, if there's... 
one lady I want to, to be in the video for sure is Ava Adams. That's mm, that's yeah. the one. Yeah. Okay. That, right? Yeah, he's like, yeah. 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 <laughs> he's definitely seen that one. <laughs> well, that's literally the one lady I want in the video for sure. I uh, I got real confused trying to pick one because uh, <laughs> I've seen quite a few <laughs> he, he's uh, in my time and in this week specifically. <laughs> um, well, you are evil. That's true. And, you know, yeah. most of... Evil is uh, impure thoughts and right. masturbation. And <laughs> she's very evil. Yeah. And when talking about Uno, we're talking about your penis. Yes, yes. yes. Um, I'm, we're talking about my single digit. Yes. Correct. Um, uh, yes. Um, that's not the size, by the way. Just so you know, I'm an uh, average six. Um, uh, yeah. If I if I had to narrow it down, I was gonna say Riley Reed, but I really I I think I'd take just about anyone to be perfectly honest. Yeah, they all do the trick. That's a pun right there. They all do the trick. Yeah, they do. Yeah. 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 Really uh, neat ones. <laughs> Thanks. I uh, I think mine would be, um, I think Sunny Days would be mine. Oh, so, yeah. I think yeah. you mentioned that one earlier. Who's Sunny Days? That was uh, Tammy Sitch's recent uh, oh. pornography video. Hey, wait, wait. Just so you know. <laughs> Which is not an awe. That was a decision hey. she made, and she did it for her. I completely, I, I believe that we should support her yeah. by watching it. Yeah, for sure. Many so times. So I did. Yeah, that's like her personal GoFundMe. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Just that's watch really her funny. porno. Just yeah. watch it. And I have a feeling these guys have done a Skype session with her. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 for sure. I paid the $15. <laughs> um, okay, Uno, when did you, uh, when did you turn evil? Uh, to be precise, October last year. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, I remember it like it was l- October next last year. <laughs> yeah, that's basically it, yeah. What, what brought this evil upon you? Um... I wish I had a really good reason, uh, but I was just really tired of getting beaten up, mostly. That makes sense. Yeah, and also, I think a big part of it is because America still won't let me in, right. and I got pretty angry about it. Yeah, no, it. we're kind of mad about it, yeah. so. Did you also get booted, Stu? I'm not, I mean, I'm not going as evil as... Uh... No, he's talking about, did you get booted oh, from, bo- the, oh, no. from America? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, did you guys get yeah. double booted? Uh, well, uh, we bought double booted. Then I got a visa for a very, very short period of time. Stu did not get. They a just visa. Uh, ignored me yeah, completely. Yeah, because I'm your, a far your, superior. Your credit superstar. was shit, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I'm in trouble. And, uh, that was a visa joke. That was, that was you a know, visa joke. When you do I liked it. I liked it. It was good. Yeah. Thank you. Are you a Mastercard or Visa man? Uh, I Mastercarded to Sunny Days. Thank you. Why did they get booted? We're about to find out the scoop here. Yeah, we got booted. Uh, early 2013, so January 2013 last. Uh, we did DDT4. It was a DDT event uh, for PWG, and we got in trouble then. And yep. then we uh, did... Were, were you, sorry, were you able to get... Did you do the event, Yes, though? we got yeah, through. Yeah, we managed we, we to go through. We showed up uh, a mere minutes before our match. How does that work? How do you get in trouble and still make it over? Uh, well, I mean, I'm a, I'm yeah, a just, very smooth talker. Uh, they just... It, they you, love... They you, love me. You asked them one question. Yeah. What <laughs> porno would you watch? <laughs> yeah. And then they... They had the same yeah. answer, yeah. connection. We <laughs> shook hands, thought real weird about it, and they let us go. Um... <laughs> But then after that, we went to WrestleMania. That went fine. And the time after, they, they stopped us because they had stopped us previously. Yeah, I'll be honest. I didn't see you in WrestleMania. No, uh, no. no I, I, was, uh, I was one of the druids that oh, okay. year. <laughs> um, uh, were there? I don't even know. Um, but yeah, so they blocked us the next time we caught in. And we've been trying to come back to America for the last three years. But they're blocking you because they think you're working? Yes. Yeah, we cannot cross to actually yeah. perform. We cannot work. We can go there to. Yeah. Uh, we can, we're not banned yeah. from America, yeah. so we can go there shopping and yeah. do whatever. But if we have uh, anything the, related to wrestling, the wrestling even then we're out. Even let's say we make no money, they count it as work, and I we could get banned for seven years, which also means I can't enter America. And I would get a record, which also means I can't hold a day job back here. Wow. So it's a whole process. It's, yeah. Bad yeah. news for America, good news for Hamilton, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there you go. Good We're job, guys. Hamilton. Thank you. <laughs> you get the exclusive rights. <laughs> you and, like, the other place that books me. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite sad. I'm real depressed about it. Yeah, on. I was curious. Like, if you got, did you, like, once, so once, like, you got that, like, right, obviously you're, you're on a roll, and you guys have been doing so great for so long, mm-hmm. and now you're making it into PWG, and you guys became fixtures in PWG, mm-hmm. and then it, like, uh, it, it, kind of, it's, it was kind of like you got dumped almost, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, essentially. We got screwed big time. It was, we went from essentially wrestling a lot and making great money and being very liked, and then in a span of three months, they're like, did they retire? What happened to oh, them? Yeah. We had and a lot of those today, messages. Every week, it's like, when are you coming back to PWG? 
Have you retired from wrestling? Yeah, are you they guys just, still they wrestling? Ignore the, this whole Canadian scene. So. so have you made like have you made have you guys made like an extra like almost I don't want to say like push but like uh, a motive to like is the goal like to just like be the best Canadian like well, in Canada or like well see what we're doing we since that uh, most of our dates used to be in the United States we try to. Uh, wrestle as much as possible here so that people you know still know that we haven't retired or anything so we do the best we can with all the dates we have in canada as much as possible everywhere we, we've kind of been at the end of the rope where we thought we were gonna i don't even know if that's the right term ignore me i'm french but um we we keep thinking we're about to get the visa and it's been we've been thinking we've been going to get it for the last three years so we're Always like oh yeah something. next month we'll be back and then next thing you know, it something gets happened. On and get moved on. Well, I'm sure with Donald Trump as the president, oh, it would be yeah. much easier just, for you now. I can't well, he, wait. Yeah. It's going we to talk, be fantastic. So. <laughs> I was gonna, it's, you, tweet him. And we're at a time now <laughs> where, him. like, you know, I, there was years where the where the, where the, the British wrestlers, like, mm. weren't seen as stars. And it was like, they're just in their own world. And now, I don't know if it's with the internet or the idea of, like, kind of awesome local wrestling that a lot of these guys, the Zack Sabres, the Ospreys, the, the, the Marty Scrolls, like these guys have all become stars. Um, and it's all, I almost feel that is the same um, like uh, on Canadian wrestlers is that you're just there. So, but like I think now is a time like especially with all, like I guess the Internet or a lot of, you know, there's the streaming things that are coming out. Yeah. It's still possible that like as Canadian, like you can be a Canadian wrestler and be great and, and just wrestle in Canada and be known around the world. Mm-hmm. I mean, there is a great scene around here, and there's a lot of fantastic wrestlers you're going to see plenty today. And there are a lot of Canadian wrestlers that travel around. I mean, even Speedball Bailey's kind of in a worse situation than us, but you're still kind of seeing him everywhere. So there is places to wrestle. It's it's not like we're banished to some dungeon somewhere. Um, but, uh, but that would be in Canada. Yeah, that, that would be, would be, be Canada. Calgary. Really really cold. Cold. Yeah, Calgary, right. Yes. Which would be all right. I would totally wrestle there. Yeah, yes. don't want to take a bump, though. Um Otherwise, yeah, I mean, we've been just trying to do the best we can here. Uh, but with, like, the current scene, we're still trying to get a visa. Hopefully something will be settled by, by WrestleMania. And uh, if not, then maybe the year after yeah. we'll be there. there I don't you know. Go. We don't know. Maybe we'll be on WrestleMania this year, right? Yeah, I just want to be a druid. <laughs> He's really positive about yeah, it. Yeah, we're going to be on Rus- I'm going to be a druid again. <laughs> <laughs> the hard hitting immigration interview here. Yeah, <laughs> really uh, where are you gonna, Where are you guys at on the internet? Uh, you can find me Evil Uno uh, on Twitter, uh, Facebook. I'm Paul Runo uh, because Paul. it sounds like Player Uno. They wouldn't take my real name. Oh, uh, <laughs> and we had a real big scoop there. No, no, no. <laughs> Paul, Please, Paul, do not call me by my real. Uh, no. Uh, other than that, you can find us on Pro Wrestling T Super Smash Bros. Uh, and uh, those are mostly the places you'll find me. Uh, same uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. It's Stu Grayson. Pretty simple. Otherwise, uh, yeah, I'm on the same thing with Super Smash. Yeah, <laughs> if you, <laughs> you follow one of us, t-shirts, you'll, find uh, yeah, you'll find the other. One, well, we hope that these visas come through and we get Hopefully. to see around the world. Uh, Evil Uno, Thank Stu you Grayson, the Super yeah. Smash Brothers. Yeah. All right. So that is the show for <laughs> today. <laughs> Been a very fun live show. Stu, I think uh, I'm done with you here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Stu Stone, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, buddy. This has been a blast. We're done. Before we get out of here, though, let's get into some plugs. And... Hey, that's nice. All right, the best way that you can support, ColtMerch.com, DigitalCult.com. Of course, I got the Wrestling Road Diaries available now and over at ColtMerch.table.ca. Twitter and Instagram, at Colt Cabana. ColtWrestling at gmail.com is my very public email. Maybe a promoter want to, want to put me on your upcoming show or convention. I got a YouTube page. I do a lot of YouTube fun there. I got a P.O. box. Uh, you can send me some snail mail. That address is on ColtCabana.com. I have upcoming events, uh, and I'm going to put, put them in post, so... Uh, uh, here, hey, hey, Colt in my apartment. Tell them about your upcoming events. Saturday, January 28th, Southgate, California, Facebook slash AWS Promotions. That Friday, as a part of rise-wrestling.com, I'm going to be a, I'm going to be doing a women's seminar. Friday, February 3rd, Coventry, England, Facebook slash Kamikaze Pro UK. Saturday, February 4th, Nottingham. Sunday, February 5th, St. Neots, England, southsidewrestling.co.uk. Friday, February 24th, Portsmouth, England, revolutionprowrestling.com. Saturday and Sunday, February 25th and 6th, Preston, England, prestoncitywrestling.com. Saturday, March 4th, New York City. Friday and Saturday, March 10th and 11th, Las Vegas, Nevada. Those are all part of ROHWrestling.com. And watch this unbelievable transition back to me live at the show. (laughs) 
Those are great events, Colt. I can't wait to do those shows. Uh, big thanks. Uh, let's let's get some thanks out first. Uh, let's thank the uh, audience here at the Night of Columbus in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. You guys are amazing. And let's thank Alpha One Wrestling. Alpha One Wrestling. Uh, big thanks to my guest in order, Stu Stone, Space Monkey, Donovan Dijak, uh, Dick Justice, and the Super Smash Brothers. I'd also, I'd also like to thank Cable Guy Jeff and Stu Stone. That was weird. Uh, Kid Russell, Matt Jenkins on the music. Damon Lewis from Tech. Some sponsors, HighSpots.com. They have a great VOD service. You can get wrestling gear there. You can get a wrestling ring there. You can get masks there. You can basically get anything there. They are the uh, amazing superstore for professional wrestling. HighSpots.com. OneHourTees.com. They help run ProWrestlingCrate.com. They also help they also help run ProWrestlingTees.com. That's a place where you can support your favorite independent professional wrestlers by buying a T-shirt. And TweakedAudio.com slash Colt, the earbuds that I use, get over 30% off free shipping just because you listen to my show, you little shit. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> this has been The Art of Wrestling. For Colt Cabana, I'm Colt Cabana. Thanks. Uh, okay, we're gonna start in three minutes. Um, it's a three-minute warning. Very nice. 